Hello. You are patient number 17. Okay. And you were admitted alongside everyone else. All other 20, well, 20 patients. Okay. Let's get you washed up first. Did they already change your clothes? They did. Good. We're going to have to change your clothes and wash you. Every two times a day. You will have constant medical attention 24 hours a day. A nurse will be waiting for you outside the room, checking up on you consistently. Now, give me one moment. I'm going to give you just a little bit of a wash. Excuse me. This is some treated solution just to give you an extra good cleansing. We don't quite know yet if the radiation present inside of your body is contagious and so we have to just take some extra precautions until we figure out if the wash will wash away the radiation or not. Until then we have to assume that you are contagious. So stay still, I'm just going to give you a good wash just right there. Go. Go. Good wash right there. And another one right there. Very good. To your chest. Very good. Now I'll lift up your arms just a little bit just so I can get a little bit of this gland right there. Now onto your arms. Some of your skin is flaking. I apologize. Just a little bit over here. Okay. Now onto your legs. I'm just going to give this a good little wash. Okay. Now onto the other side. Just give this a good little wash. Must be treated as a regular I'm going to be taking your temperature. I just have to see how much of a fever you are running. So open your mouth for me. Just going to get a little bit of a diagnosis here. Put it on, keep it underneath your tongue, please. Thank you. That is quite high. Have you been able to vom you've been vomit you've been oh, and diarrhea? Have you been having a lot of diarrhea? Okay. That is seemingly quite common, so your skin is very red. And how quickly did you start vomiting after the exposure? Okay. And your fever is quite high. How quickly did you feel yourself getting hot after the exposure? Quite quickly. Okay. And you've been having and how quickly do you think you started having that diarrhea? Okay. I see that you do have extensive burning. Okay. I'll just take a little closer look. Just to see. 
see what we're dealing with here. Yeah. It seems that these are both thermal and radiation burns. It seems that both the fire and the e chemical exposure has mistreated your skin. I'm going to take a, a look around your face. Stay still for me. Okay. I'm going to take a little look over here. Okay. You might be highly exposed according to our records and according to your symptoms to high levels of radiation that would cause deterministic effects. Deterministic effects are very, 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 very hard to treat, but we will try nonetheless. First, I'm going to be putting a little feeding tube. Down your throat, into your stomach. This will have a mixture of electrolytes and fluids. Have you been having trouble swallowing and breathing? It's because your mucous membranes have been damaged. They are not producing any fluids which would ease your breathing and swallowing. So, to make sure that you are breathing properly and that you are replenishing your fluids, which will greatly help your system, Open your mouth for me, please. Open it. I'm going to just insert this feeding tube. There we go. It wasn't that hard. Correct? Good. Now, I'm going to just. in some of these electrolytes and some of these fluids. I'm also going to be including some antibiotics to aid with the radiation. a little bit of an eye exam. A lot of our patients have been having some scarring in the eyes, some clouding and some ulcerations in the eyes. I'm going to be just giving you a little look to see if your eyes have been compromised. So I want you to look straight forward at me. Keep looking straight forward at me. I'm going to be looking deeply into your eyes. So stay still. Stay still for me. I'm just going to give you a little bit of a look. Okay. Now for the other eye going to give a good little 
look see if I can find anything look up for me please okay. look down okay look to the left okay. and look to the right okay. now for the other eye look up for me please okay look to the left okay look to the right and look down Yes, I did notice some scarring and some ulcerations to the eyes. We will see what we can do about that. For now, I will note it down. Now, I'm going to give you a quick thyroid exam I'm going to see how your thyroid is reacting most likely your thyroid has been deeply affected by the radiation exposure and it will most likely necessitate some stable iodine stable iodine will saturate the thyroid and it will prevent any radioactive iodine from being absorbed into your thyroid and causing it to react okay stay still lift your chin for me please thank you I'm just going to give you a good little check I would ask you to swallow, but you cannot, so do not. It's okay, I can assess either way. Okay. Okay. Your thyroid is reacting. I'm going to give you just a little bit of stable iodine. I'm going to put some in your IV. Not your IV, your, your feeding tube. That way you can ingest it. Okay, very good. We will be administering some stable iodine periodically to keep your thyroid on point. We don't want your thyroid to run out, otherwise it will start absorbing the radioactive iodine. And I'm afraid your body has already absorbed enough radiation. We are going to be doing some surgeries. I am going to be cutting out the pieces of your flesh that are significantly exposed to radiation. And the pieces that are pretty much not only falling off but also severely burned and blackened and affected 
and we will also be attempting a bone marrow transplant this is to help with your circulation the radiation does affect your circulation it prevents your blood from clotting and it also weakens your blood cells and destroys your white blood cells which makes it very difficult for it to fight off the radiation so we're going to be attempting a bone marrow transplant and excising your skin from your body I'm going to test your skin see if you can feel it give me one moment tell me I'm going to give you a little bit of a scratch in particular areas that I notice your skin peeling and you tell me if you can feel it if you can't I will snip those areas off and stitch some skin onto those areas and hope that your body accepts the grafts okay so tell me did you feel that? okay Stay still, you can close your eyes if you like to. Sometimes the psychology is worse than the actual experience. So you can close your eyes if you'd like. Now I'm going to be grafting some of this skin onto that area. Okay. That chunk is done. I'm going to address this little part there. Tell me once again if you can feel it. Can you feel that? No. Okay. Stay still. Okay. And now to put a little bit of this skin onto the area. How are you feeling? Good. Good. There we go. Now we're going to be addressing this cheek it's quite blackened so I'm going to once again ask if you can feel that area as I poke it and if you can't I will be snipping off that piece of your cheek and grafting a new piece of skin onto that area Okay, are you ready? You can close your eyes if you 
feel a little bit nervous. So stay still. Can you feel this? No. Okay. Right. Close your eyes if you feel a little better that way. Going to go in. How are you feeling? Good. Okay. It's almost done. I'm almost done. There we go. You're doing so good. Now, I'm going to just. Put some skin craft right there. Good. Good, good, good. Okay. And now going to do a little bone marrow transplant in the areas in which we see it severely depressed so I noticed there is an area right here that might necessitate a transplant and also an area right here that would necessitate a transplant. So, once again, I'm going to ask you if you can feel this. Can you feel that? No. Okay. Where I'm going to make a small incision. Replace the bone marrow. Did that feel? Did you feel pain? Okay, once more on that arm. So tell me, can you feel this? No. Okay, good. Going to be making small little incision. Replacing the bone marrow.
Give me one moment to stitch it up. We will keep an eye on your progress. And see how you fare. Do you have any questions for me before I leave? We... We don't think this would be a big problem for the rest of society, it seems that the problem has been quite allocated to the area affected. No need to cause panic among the normal citizens. We, we're, we're keeping this quite quiet. We don't want anyone else to find out what happened here. What if the contamination spreads? Well, we can't let anyone find out what happened here. Too many nuclear plants were built like Chernobyl. It would affect the reputation of the Soviet Union. We can't let anyone else find out what has happened here. It must stay as quiet as possible. You might be fine. You might be okay. There's no need to be upset. We will find a way to make you better and it will be like it never happened. Just another day. We think it might have been a graphite explosion. The rods that were keeping, keeping the pressure down or leveled when all of them dropped, the graphite reacted. And an explosion occurred. We think if the graphite hadn't been dropped that the explosion could have been avoided. Yes. Other plants have had similar issue where there was a supercharge. There was an intense influx of power emitted, but they did not shut down or level down the plant, and that avoided the explosion. But it is common to have similar situations. So, nonetheless, the situation is being taken care of. There's no need to panic. I will visit you a little later just to keep tabs on your progress and see how your body accepts your new skin and your new bone marrow. Okay? Is there anything you might need right now? No? Okay, well, in that case, I'm off to patient number 18.